Dairy farming is not an easy occupation, it's got a lot of challenges. There's a really high demand for good quality people that want to show up to work every day. We've brought in three Filipino staff through CCR. Since they've turned up, they are here every morning on time, if not early. Dan Hinton and Abby, they've got three great staff members on their farm that are really working as a team together, taking a lot of that workload off Dan and Abby to enable them to have a bit more of a balance in their life and enjoy farming as it should be in New Zealand. They have freed up time for me to spend my energies on making the farm better and to spend more time with my family. They don't take shortcuts, they don't rush to get home. I no longer have to worry whether the cows are going to get milked properly, whether the cows are going to get fed properly. Systems are carried out whether I'm there or not every day without fail. Kia ora, good evening everyone. Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. And welcome back to our virtual coffee house chat brought to you by CC Recruitment. I will be your host for tonight. I am Clarence Oliveros. And we, you are guys welcome to tune in with us. Please make sure to grab all your, your coffees with you or tea and just relax. I know you guys are excited because it's already level two in New Zealand. Like most of you are in the mall, in the pub, restaurants, having a nice dinner. But this is really an important time for you guys to tune in because the topics that will be covered tonight are Immigration New Zealand, Amendment Bill Updates, Philippine Embassy Updates, and Changes on Alert Level 2. And I'd just like to greet Warwick and me. And hi, guys. How are you? Good evening. Hi, Clarence. How are you? Hi, Clarence. Yeah, I'm sure you have your coffee with you. And for all the viewers, I just want to shout out the clients and all the candidates that are tuning in with us. You are guys welcome for tonight's live. And also, please make sure to share and like our page. And just a quick reminder, this live is recorded. So every um, video that we have on our previous episodes it's all uploaded on our Facebook and also on our YouTube. So make sure to just subscribe and share to your friends. Everyone is welcome if you're in the Philippines, if you're outside the country, if you're in New Zealand, Australia, if you want to shout out, just let us know. And then we will all accommodate your questions as well. And also to start with the discussion, I would like to welcome Warwick and also one of our licensed immigration advisor, Ming Marshall. Please take over. Thank you. Thanks, Clarence. Um, so tonight I'll just be giving a bit of an update on changes under Alert Level 2 um, and how they may affect you guys and what we are doing at CCR to accommodate things. So under Alert Level 2, uh, it was effective from Thursday this week. We will be opening our office from Monday the 18th of May. So normal operations will occur from that date. So the government announcement of a move to Level Two allows us to do that and um, we will be following our physical distancing as well as that some of our team will remain working from home from time to time so if there's ever a particular person you'd like to see or meet with in the office please don't hesitate but ensure you call or email ahead of time so we can ensure uh, the person you intend to see is available in the office. Um, we'll have updates on conditions that we need to adhere to if you are visiting the office. Uh, one thing's for sure, if you are sick or feeling unwell, please uh, stay home and be safe. Uh, if you are coming to the office, uh, we can arrange to a time to see you or if you would prefer, we can still do things via Zoom and have interviews and meetings um, over that uh, software so if there's a time that you want to see us yeah just get in touch and we'll arrange that for you um once again i'd like to thank ambassador gary domingo for his attendance in last week's session he was very informative and helpful to our philippine community to give them updates on uh, certain things that are occurring in the philippine embassy world so uh just to update you all the philippine embassy will be open as well from monday uh, their operating hours are 11 a.m until 3 p.m monday to friday by appointment only so if you 
need to go to the embassy, ensure you make an appointment and just remember no appointment, no mask, no entry. They have a pretty strict policy on that. So ensure you follow that. Uh, for those of you that didn't catch last week, the ambassador updated us that uh, due to budget restrictions, they will no longer be offering their mobile sessions for passport renewal. So if you were intending on attend, um, being present for a, a passport renewal session under their mobile plan outside of the Philippine office, the Wellington office, then um, just be aware that those sessions that were in, in, in the time frame have, have been cancelled and at this stage they won't be reinstated so if you do have any passport concerns or you need to get your passports renewed then the only place to do that is at the philippine embassy office in wellington and again you need to make an appointment to do that um, just under flights updates so philippine airlines have announced that they will they've still remained cancelled until end of June. So at this stage, there's no flights available from Auckland to Manila until end of June at the earliest. Um, as well as that, Manila has extended their enhanced community quarantine, which is now extended through to the end of May. Um, they tend to be doing that two weeks at a time. So we'll wait and see if that's going to be the final date. Uh, it could be a chance that that gets extended again. So at this stage, uh, the lockdown there occurs until the end of May. So for MBI processing or OEC attainment, um, those will be extended until those government offices are allowed to operate once again. Uh, so as previously advised, we're still lodging visa applications. Min will be able to give an update shortly on the priorities for processing from Immigration New Zealand and the updates we've received. But for those of you with visa applications currently under process, please be patient. We are seeing some signs of Immigration New Zealand officers coming back on deck and handling those applications. So over the next few weeks, we will start to see some approvals come through, which I know have been uh, a long time in the, in the making, but we're getting there. So there's some positive signs happening. So thank you for your patience. Uh, for those of you that are currently looking at employment or new employers, we we continue to work on these applications. We're, we're solving problems between employers and employees, and we're trying to place guys into jobs where they fit. Um, in general, we, we advise that if you're currently employed, you should be hanging on to that job at all costs. Um, there's thousands of migrants currently, especially in places like Queenstown and the West Coast and tourism um, areas where lots of migrants are currently out of work, lost their jobs and facing quite extreme circumstances to find employment. So th there's a lot more people out there looking for work at the moment. And if you've got a job, you should be hanging on to that and putting 100% into keeping it. Um, so yeah, I just want to Put the put the advice out there that um, be thankful you've got a position and and you currently have a job. Um, just hang on to what you've got instead of going out there chasing what might look like um, greener pasture. So yeah, that's it from me uh, in terms of what I wanted to advise tonight. But um, in terms of everything in, uh, regarding immigration, we'll pass you on to Min Marshall now, who will give you a bit of an update on. Um, yeah, some information we've received from immigration over the last week, as well as updates on the immigration amendment bill and changes that we've seen coming from that. So thanks very much, everybody. I'll be here for questions again at the end. Um, if you've got anything, throw it up on the Facebook live stream. And uh, as we get to that, Clarence will answer, answer your queries and questions and I direct them to either me or Min. And uh, yeah, we're happy to help. So if uh, we don't do anything tonight, um, please be patient and we'll be in touch when we have the answers for you. Thank you. Thank you, Warwick and Clarence. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's good to be here again. Um, so to give you a brief update of visa processing, Immigration New Zealand expects visa processing capacity to increase significantly under level two. They have now reopened their offices with limited staff though, due to COVID-19 guidelines. Um, however, the, um, 
all offshore offices are, are remain closed. So now Immigration New Zealand is able to resume processing of residence class visa applications from as of yesterday, and they have to prioritize both residence class visas and temporary entry class visa applications. So for residence applications, um, they prioritize those applicants who are currently in New Zealand over those who are overseas. Uh, for temporary visa applications, the priority of course are given to critical workers who are who, to support the government response to COVID-19 and for other temporary visa applications who are in now in who are in New Zealand. So most of you would be on essential skills work visa. Um, Immigration New Zealand will be requiring um, a range of um, information, including the need to help, or this is to help New Zealand businesses provide their services and also protect New Zealand um, uh, New, uh, employment opportunities, sorry, for New Zealanders. Uh, for essential, uh, essential skills work visa to be granted, immigration must be satisfied that at the time of your application being assessed, there must be no New Zealanders available to do the work being offered. Any changes or to the prioritization criteria, um, we, you know, especially that the international, there are restrictions to international travel, we will let you know. Um, immigration officers actually can prioritize other applications if it is deemed necessary. I just want to touch on those because I have a few clients who have inquired. These are these are migrant uh, migrants who are temporary migrants who had their visa expired on the first of April. So, if you hold a work visa, student visitor, limited or interim visa, you must let us know um, you are now unlawful in New Zealand. So, you must either leave the country immediately or make a request for a special temporary or resident visa under section 61 of the Immigration Act. If you are in this position, please contact CC Recruitment or myself immediately. So those who are looking at changing their, I mean, Warwick's already mentioned this, those who are changing their, the, the conditions of their visa under the normal instructions um, for example, your work hours are changed or, and you need to find another work, um, it may be difficult for you to apply, to make an application to vary the conditions of your current visa. Um, however, we will, we will let you know as soon as we have more information about this. So those whose visas have been extended to September 25 under e epidemic management notice, if this is, should this be extended uh, or the epidemic notice is renewed, your visa expiry um, will also be extended. Um, we will let you know if, in, if, you know, if this happens, we will let you know and give you some update. Those who had last week, a lot of questions were asked regarding um, going back, say for example, the Philippines for a holiday. Um, I would advise you not to go because if you leave the country, you're unlikely to be able to come back to New Zealand because of the restriction, uh, because of the border restriction. Okay, so I can answer some questions regarding that at the moment, um, uh, later on at the end. Um, so let's go to the changes to Immigration Act as a response to COVID-19. So you, a lot of you would have heard about it. This uh, change to government, to Immigration Act was labeled by government as pragmatic. Um, the, the Minister of Immigration announced last Wednesday the passing of the proposed amendment to the Immigration Act. So I just want to read to you um, the intent for this amendment. Um, it is to allow the government to amend the act so they have the necessary flexibility and efficiency to address the unprecedented challenge of managing large numbers of migrants who are practically unable to leave New Zealand due to the COVID-19 pandemic or who live in New Zealand but are offshore and are facing difficulty returning to New Zealand. The government has made it clear that they will not be revoking visas or suspending onshore applications. Any special direction made under the Amendment Act will not disadvantage visa holders. Um, they ensure, this will ensure that there are appropriate safeguards in place 
and that it is fit for purpose. The changes to the act will enable the government to amend visa conditions for groups of people and extend visas for groups of people for varying periods of time. It will also allow for one or more of the prescribed requirements to apply for a visa to be waived for groups of people. Uh, it will stop groups of people overseas from making visa applications when it would not be possible for them to use the visa to travel to New Zealand in any event due to the border restrictions. These powers, the special powers are time limited and will only be available for 12 months. So that's our my update for the changes to the Immigration Act and any questions, uh, we can answer it later on. Back to Clarence. Okay, thank you so much me for that very impo informative discussion. So I just have a few questions here, but I wanna give a shout out first to all the People are just jumping in. Hi to Eric and Scott. I know you guys are from Auckland. Stay safe. And hi to Reynaldo, to Dennis, to Jonathan. Hi, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. And we have a question from June. Um, this is for Min. Can I apply a variation of condition now as an essential skills visa holder? Same position, but higher salary. Yes, this is, um, this is what I mentioned just um, a while ago that it, it will take time because right, uh, currently Immigration New Zealand is not processing paper-based paper applications, which um, 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 VOC or variation of conditions of your work visa um, under the normal instructions is, is, is paper-based. All right, so do you want, to, perhaps yeah. Warwick can talk about and just on that note, um, so we would only recommend um, doing a variation of conditions if you've got, you know, sort of 11 or 12 months plus uh, remaining on your current visa. And uh, the update or the information that's available online that we've seen is to say that um, Immigration New Zealand strongly recommends uh, doing an online application rather than a paper-based mm. at the moment, just given their ability to pick up those physical documents and process them. Um, there's limited amount of staff still on hand at Immigration New Zealand branches. So right now they're suggesting that an online application is more likely to be prioritized at the moment. So from our point of view, yeah, unless you've got special circumstances where a variation of conditions is, is exactly right for you, then we would recommend uh, just doing an, a regular online application. As you know, with a variation of conditions, you, you only get the term that you have on your current visa. Uh, with, a, with a new application, you get a whole new visa and a whole new term. So in most circumstances, uh, we would suggest that a, a new application is the, prior, the, the preferred option. Mm. Uh, and yeah, happy to talk about that on a case by case once we see the details and Min can give you her point of view on whether that's recommended. So um, yeah, at this stage, the online system is, is better in terms of the priority from Immigration New Zealand. But just to add to that, um, those who have been thinking about changing their jobs, please speak to Warwick first before you do anything meaning do not give your notice unless you have spoken to either Warwick or, or your um, pastoral, um, pastoral team of um, CC recruitment, or you can contact me. Um, that, yeah. would, that would be my advice um, because we don't want you to get into difficulties. Yeah. Just on that note, so um, there's situations where people are planning to change employers first of June's approaching and that's generally the time, especially in dairy farming, when people change employers and start with a new employer from the first of June. So uh, th there's lots of applications we currently have in place for people that uh, had planned that in advance and were thinking of moving to their new employer from the first of June. But there is a option for us to enable that to occur under the request to vary conditions currently, um, but that's not going to be suitable for all circumstances. And I suppose 
that's only going to give a limited time frame to allow you allow you to work for the new employer. So the details around a, a request to vary conditions are that you can change an employer in the same region for the same position and that allows you to work for I think a six week period after New Zealand enters alert level two. So as we enter that on the 14th of, sorry, I think it was the 14th of May, that will enable you to work for six weeks. So up until the 25th of June. So it does give you the ability to work for a new employer up until the 25th of June in some circumstances, but come 25th of June, if your actual visa isn't approved, then you need to stop work until you have your actual visa approved. So if you are changing employers, there's some you know, details around that and we wouldn't want anyone to be working illegally or unlawfully for an employer that they don't have a visa for. So if there's special circumstances that you have, please yeah, touch base with us, talk about it first, break it down in terms of uh, the realities around how quickly we can expect your visa to be processed and then make some decisions around that situation. So again, um, there's going to be specific details for each individual and we'd prefer to talk about that on a case-by-case -case basis and, and have an immigration advisor look over your file before giving any recommendations but just be careful around that at the moment there's um, yeah some misinformation out there and we just want to ensure that everyone's fully informed around what they can and can't do. Thank you so much for that. And I hope you guys understand the, the rules. And if you have any question, I just want to give a shout out. Just don't hesitate to ask. Um, just um, send me a message or comment in this live and we will try to answer. Um, another question from one of our candidates, um, Min. Like for those who are in subject to Section 61, how long will it take? For it to be processed because the normal application it takes a longer time like how about for the section 61 applications okay under section 61 it is a request and um, um those who want to apply through this process must remember that that immigration new zealand doesn't have to give a reason they have the discretion to approve it or not approve it and they don't have to give a reason why for example why they haven't approved it okay um, based on the, the, the applications that we have dealt with in the last two months, um, this, they process the um, Section 61 request uh, within a month. Um, I know that of, of late, they have been doing it so quickly. So that could be between two weeks to a month, or it could be longer. But the, you must provide all the information, you must provide all the documents, because um, immigration officers will not request for further information. They will not call me if I represent you. They will not call any other immigration advisors who represent you to give more information. They have the discretion to, to approve or decline, and they will not give any reason why it's been declined. Do you have any thoughts about that, Warwick? Yeah, so again, Section 61s are, yeah, are really up to discretion of immigration New Zealand. We take them on a case by case basis, but you cannot really predetermine the outcome of one of those applications. They are up to their own merits of the case, and really you you're leaning on immigration New Zealand and their discrepancy whether they allow you to remain in New Zealand or not. So um, we can't really foresee the outcome of those. We're really up and um, you know, leaving it up to immigration to make their decision based on the merits of the case. So again, um, if you're in a situation where you're unlawful, please let us know and we'll do what we can to help you in those situations, but we cannot, you know, give a predetermined outcome on those given uh, to, to go for a section 61, you, you are unlawful at the time of doing it. So it's, um, it's a lenient situation. And I just I just need to add, Clarence, that um, this, we can only do the Section 61 request if you have not been um, 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 
given a deportation liability notice. If you have, then we cannot do we cannot do it. You can't apply under section sixty one. Too late. Too late. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Another question, and since we are opening our applications to other onshore applicants, there was a question here from Doms. Is there any age limit when applying for a dairy farmer? Warwick, what do you think? Not particularly. Like, uh, to be honest, we've brought people to New Zealand that are up to probably 54 years of age when they arrived in New Zealand for the first time. Um, I would recommend that most employers are looking for someone that's fit and agile and ready to do the job. Obviously, dairy farming is quite a physical job, uh, lots of lifting and, and heavy work with large animals. So if you're not fit and um, up to the workload, then I wouldn't suggest it's an occupation for you. Um, but yeah, as I said, we've, we've brought in guys before that are you know, get into their 50s and that's not an issue, um, just depends on the employer. So, I mean, I would recommend if you're coming to New Zealand, you know, you come in here for the long term, not the short term, and you need to think about are you going to be prepared to work for the next sort of five to ten years of your life here in New Zealand? And if not, maybe there's another option for you. But, you know, if you've got that capacity, then why not? So, um, in the most part, we would have candidates that apply for us that are probably between the ages of sort of 20 to late 40s but um yeah on occasion we've we've, we've placed people into jobs that are into the 50s too so no um no discrimination from that side of things yeah cool thank you guys help is wealth so another question from jonathan if you are moving from farm a to farm b if Farm B was re requesting to self-quarantine for 14 days before going to work, does the employee need to comply even if it was onshore for work? Yeah, so that's, um, you know, that's an employee situation. It's not really to do with immigration, and that's just a, a case where, um, you know, if, if, if a workplace is concerned that, someone coming into the workplace and being in touch with other employees is potentially going to bring um, a COVID situation to their workplace and they're well within their rights to enforce a quarantine or a self-isolation. Um, it, it, you know, the current, current situation with COVID is it's quite, um, in New Zealand, we're relatively safe, but in a lot of countries in the world, it's it's still a, um, a big deal and there's lots of cases and, you know, even going the, to the supermarket, you're taking a slight risk that you're going to have an infection. So if an employer has the requirement for you to self-isolate and obviously not obtain an income, then that's part of the process of, of switching farms. So, yeah, I, I, I do think the employer's got the ability to um, not enforce that, but recommend that and if you don't agree with it then they don't have to give you the job so um, at the end of the day the employer makes the call on those sorts of things similar to annual leave those sorts of decisions the final say is with the employer and if that's a requirement that they have for their specific place of employment then yeah that's up to them. Cool thank you so much um, we have one question from Ian is the immigration amendment bill beneficial to those visa holders stock abroad or offshore? Um, what do you think, Mean? Well, the, the amendment to the Immigration Act is really for the government to address the massive numbers of um, migrant holders uh, or you know visa applications, etc., who are in New Zealand. So. Um, just want to point out as well that the Bill of Rights in New Zealand is not applicable to offshore applicants. So basically, until you come to New Zealand, you, you do not have those rights. So um, in terms of being beneficial, um, maybe, but um, really this is tailored for onshore, um, onshore migrants. Okay. Both post resident and um, uh, resident visa holders and 
temporary visa holders. Okay, thanks for that. Um, this question is for you, Warwick. Um, there was one candidate, and I, I know that there are lots of candidates there applying, that they are stuck in Queenstown, and they are redundant to their work and no dairy experience. Do they have a chance to apply in the dairy farming? Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, we've got employers that are looking for staff that have the right attitude, you know. So th there's situations where someone might be um, had, a, had a previous job working in a hotel as a cleaner or a porter or, or a maintenance man, and uh, they've lost their job and they're currently looking for new employment. Uh, we can assist those where possible. Likely, if you have some background in dairy farming or you've got a qualification in, in Bachelor of Science and Animal Health or something like that, that's going to give you a better chance of obtaining a visa. Um, it, as I said, we're currently in situations where there's limited information coming from immigration. Uh, I can see that the government doesn't want to leave migrant workers stranded and you know, there was a comment from Winston Peters recently saying if you're a migrant and you've lost your job, you should just go home. I don't believe that's the case. And I think, you know, New Zealand as a country, we're really open to people. We we realise that, you know, migrant workers bring a lot to New Zealand and we're not going to leave you in the lurch in times like this. If you have the skills and the attitude and the reliability to take up a job in another field, then um, I think we can help you. It's just a case of uh, for employers and from their perspective, um, looking at things logically, I suppose, that they're not going to be open to taking on employment of someone that's really just filling the gap and, and that doesn't really have a passion for farming or, or a, a, you know, a need to want to work in that industry. And if you are just looking to take on a short-term job on a farm and pay the bills then that's probably not the right attitude to take um if you're looking at you know making a sh career shift to farming that's what you've got to be focused on and, and you should be in it for the long term and yeah you're obviously going to find employment um in dairy farming if you've got the right attitude so yeah i don't think there's any issues around those that are stranded that are out of work if they're if they've got the right mental approach and um yeah we're, we're here to assist those situations so as i said we've got employers that are looking for staff and uh if we can try and match those candidates up with the employers then that's what we're here to do thanks for that and another question from one of our candidates this is for me if i decide to cancel my current application with inz will they refund the visa fee no no, it will not be refunded and it will not be used or, as, or de deferred to a, another application that you that that, that um, anyone would like would um, lodge. So no, the answer is no, it won't be refunded. And on that note, be careful around doing that. So like, you know, if your visa is expired and you're currently on an interim visa and you decide to withdraw, withdraw your application, that actually removes your rights to lodge a new application and you mm. essentially return home. So, yeah, that's that's the correct outlook, Min. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So, um, thank you so much for that. Another question from Jeremy. Is NZ now accepting student visa application offshore? Or do you, any thoughts for that? Okay, currently Immigration New Zealand, we are still lodging student visa applications. I know that it is, um, it is in the eight special powers of, of government to, to suspend the ability for applications to be, uh, for, for people to make applications for visas or submit expressions of interest. Um, this special power is only allowing the minister to recommend to the cabinet that um, that that a temporary suspension be applied. This this um, if it is approved, then it will only be for three months. It's not forever. It's only for three months. So yes, the answer is yes. We are still accepting student visa applications. We are still processing, sorry, student visa applications. 
helpful. Thank you. Um, another question. This is for Warwick from Josh. And also, this is for all the applicants that we had before. So, he got interviewed and he passed the interview. He's an onshore applicant. And can you just give us an update to all the candidates who already got interviewed and passed? And yeah, just want to shout out to all the applicants as well who are asking the same questions. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. In terms of um, scheduling interviews, I've been really impressed with the caliber of candidates that are coming through to us at the moment. And yet we do have employers looking for staff currently and, and ongoing. So as much as possible, when we interview someone and we find out the preferences of the individual and what you're looking for, we're trying to match those up with the employers we, we have. It does take a little bit of time and I suppose um, in the current environment when there's no real ability to interview someone in person, that's just changed under alert level two, but it does still have its challenges when um, farms are sometimes isolated and candidates are not really in the same location. So we really rely on that uh, video interview that we do and the CV and the details we have from candidates to put you forward for employment options. Um, for those of you who are waiting for answers and we've interviewed you, we are working on your applications proactively. We're putting you in front of employers where we think you might suit. And um, as we come to an agreement with an employer, we'll definitely let you know that we have an outcome and you've got a job opportunity for you to have a look at. So please be patient. It does take a little bit of time to match you up with certain employers. So um, yeah, if you haven't heard with us within a week, I wouldn't be panicking. Uh, if you get to sort of two weeks since you've had your interview and you haven't heard too much, then yeah, just reach out to us and try to get an update. We'll inform you on what positions we've nominated you for and what positions we think have we have suitable for you. And um, yeah, as soon as we have um, an employer that's happy to go ahead with things, we'll be in touch for sure to let you know. So. Um, just be mindful that we are working on your application. We are trying to find the best employment situation for you. It's just, um, yeah, slow, slow developments and we're working on each case as we can. Cool. Yeah, thank you for that. And another question for Min, this is from Rodrigo. How about I'm in interim visa and I am to transfer to another farm with the same region this June? Any thoughts, Min? Interim visa. Yeah, interim visa. He's in interim visa and I am trans I am to transfer to another farm with the same region this month. I like I mean this June, coming June. That is okay. Thank you, Rodrigo. That question is actually difficult to answer because you haven't given us uh, more information. Uh, we don't know um, if if you have an interim visa. With, it would be inter, important. It's important to know why you've got an interim visa. You could have an interim visa because you have lo already lodged a visa application and you're waiting for the outcome. So, um, and and your previous visa visa um, your previous visa has now expired and you have lodged a visa application before it expired. So therefore, you've got a visa application. So if he is referring to going to this job in June and he still hasn't got his visa. I think that might be the line of his questioning. Um, all he can do is really wait for his, um, for his visa to come through. He cannot go to that job unless his visa is, is approved. Would I be right, Warwick? Yeah, just uh, we might need to have some more detail on that one to give an actual solid response. But yeah. um, I mean, if you had a visa expire between the 2nd of April and the July the 9th, then you would have gained an automatic extension through to the 25th of September. Um, so your interim visa would have been carried through to then. So you're still sort of mm. le legally able to remain with your current employer, but switching employers, yeah, you'd need to have either a request to vary conditions approved or, or your new visa approved before you could start work for the new employer. So. Um, again, we might need to get some more detail on that one to give a proper answer, but yeah, yeah there's a few delicate situations there. Yeah, he actually have a follow-up question because he just gave the details. So interim visa for the new employer 
and will start in June but still on interim. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, if he would have got his interim visa because he has lodged a new application and that Immigration New Zealand has not made a decision on the on his new work visa application. So his question is really saying, I think he's saying, can I go to my new job in June? Hmm. Or he needs to wait until he gets um, his, until his visa is, is approved, unless he, he holds a visa for that employer. So he's on entry visa, he cannot. Um, depending on what he is doing at the moment, because he could have an interim visa for his um, previous, um, what would it be? So if he's, let me just, let me, let me answer that. Let me think of that. Um, but the, basically what he's saying is he's got a job for this new employer in June. He cannot go to that new employer unless his visa is approved. The only way around that would potentially be to lodge a request to vary conditions to enable you to move there yeah. for the next six weeks until 25th of June, potentially. Yes. Yeah, I hope we answer your question, Rodrigo. If you still have confusion, don't hesitate to message us. Another um, question from one of our candidates. Can I apply for a new BOC if I already have an interim visa? What do you think that means? A new VOC. So yeah. I already, I've, if he's in an interim visa. Okay. So if you've got an interim visa, you actually cannot apply for another new visa because not on interim visa. Um, well, basically the answer is no, you can't. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Any thoughts about that, Warwick? Would you like to add? Yeah, so I think that's really answered by men. If, if you're on an interim visa, it doesn't give you the right to, I think, apply for a new application. So you best just to see out the, the application that you've currently got underway. Um, I just note there's a question here from Reggie. Um, is it possible that no dairy experience from the Philippines can apply? So um, as you know, currently offshore applications are not being processed by Immigration New Zealand. We have uh, applied for people with no experience in dairy farming if they have a relevant qualification and that's enabled them to obtain a visa in the past. Um, under the current scenario, we're, we're still waiting to get offshore applications processed. It's probably um, not worth coming forward for a job opportunity at this stage. We don't have a lot of employers that are looking for offshore staff because of the current border closure. So it's just a case of um, waiting in, until that changes. Okay, cool. Another question from Elijah. Hi, mom. How about to renew my visa? I'm almost three years dairy farm in Kaikaroa this coming October. I'm still come to stand down for one year. That's making sense. Yeah. So he is almost three years and he's trying to renew this coming October. So is it like covered in a stand down for one year? You think maybe? Uh, today, that policy, the stand down, um, stand down period, that policy is status quo. Um, unless he can apply for a um, higher skilled visa or, or find um, um, an employment offer that is higher than his current um, skill, his current occupation, then he can lodge it, but he cannot wait until October and then apply. So far, we don't have an update about that, whether it's going to be in the past, you know, last year sometime, they were talking, immigration was talking about maybe addressing it by sector, you know, farming industry or building industry. At the moment, we don't have an update. Okay, cool. yeah. thank you. And um, another question from Melanie. Uh, sir, I just want to ask about the status of our application. Because of the lockdown, they cannot lodge the visa. What if the medicals already expired? Are we, what are we going to do? Like we're going to um, do it again? Because it's only good for three months. 
Yeah, when medicals are expired, uh, we are still able to lodge applications. Like there's situations right now where we've got visas lodged on missing some vital information, but as long as we've got a, a I suppose a reason or a good explanation as to why that information is missing, like you actually can't physically go to a hospital to get a medical done, uh, then that's understandable from immigration. Potentially there's going to be cases where visas that are lodged without that vital information, uh, once immigration officers pick up those cases and start processing, they will allow for a time frame to get those requirements um, fixed or, or or completed. So um, at this stage, yes, we are able to lodge an application if some vital piece of information is missing. Um, we're just going to have to deal with those on a case by case once immigration starts picking them up to process them, whether they will then require us to redo those elements that are missing or they will process it on the basis that um, it wasn't able to be completed at the time. Okay, cool. Thanks for that. Um, do you think, Mint, they're going to give a consideration like instead of giving an allowance for three months, they're going to extend it or still stick to three months? <laughs> See, we have got a number of applications that are sitting there that have not been processed by Immigration New Zealand. We have provided medicals that are within the time frame of three months. Um, they have, they may ask for more information or if there is, well, if there is an issue about that medical, they probably will ask for more, um, more tests or whatever, but as of now, they have, we have not been told that those visa applications that are pending, um, that they will be required to uh, submit new medical. We don't, we don't have that information. We have not been informed. So as far as I know, once you lodge it and, and it was current at that point, when we lodge the visa application, that, that should be okay, unless there's some you know, medical problems. Okay. Thank you for that. And uh, also one question from one of our candidates, since it's already level two, is Immigration New Zealand now full force operational? Because his visa was lodged in late February. Of, offshore or onshore? Offshore. Um, onshore. Should be onshore this one. Yeah. Onshore. Oh, we don't know. It should come soon because they are they are now on about 70%, I believe, capacity. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we should, well, we already, we have started, it's very slow, but we have started seeing some um, movement within immigration in New Zealand. Okay. And uh, another question from Ran. Any changes in mid 2020 on ANSCO? Mm. Mm. That's uh, left to be informed at this stage. So we were aware that um, mid-2020 immigration had advised that they would be dropping the anchor system at that time. Um, obviously, we're, we're two weeks out from mid-2020, and there's been no update on that actually happening. I do recall when I sat in on the um, immigration update, well, it wasn't really an immigration update, but it was an update from Immigration Minister Ian Lees Galloway. He did say that Immigration New Zealand is still strongly leaning towards um, removing the ANSCO system. It's outdated and it's something that they want to move away from in the future. He didn't say that that, that time frame is going to be delayed, but again, we've never seen an actual date that that is going to come into force. So at this stage, it's still expected that immigration in New Zealand is going to drop the ANSCO system in mid-2020. They haven't sort of made any announcement on a date that that's actually going to happen, and they haven't made any announcement on the fact that it might be pushed out further. So at this stage, I suppose, um, going off previous information, we can only expect that it is going to um, no longer be used from, from mid-2020. But we'll wait and see what happens, really. Okay, cool. Thank you. And uh, before we end, I just want to 
ask like a tips or advice for those applicate like for those candidates who are stuck in the Philippines at the moment and they cannot do anything about it at the moment. Um, what do you guys suggest or would you like to give any um, advice or tips or yeah, should they wait patiently or should they look for another option? Yeah, thank you. Well, I suppose from my perspective, you know, if you have the opportunity to, to gain employment in the Philippines and obtain an income, then I wasn't wouldn't hesitate around doing that. Um, yeah, it's it's a tough one in terms of um, having commitment to a job when you really want to foresee your your plans to join New Zealand employment as as expected. But it is a case of um, those people should be sort of obtaining the work where they can find it right now. While there's a lot of unknowns out there, we do not know a date on when border closures are going to reopen. We do not know a date on when airlines are going to start flying between Philippines and New Zealand again. Uh, at this stage, it is let's take this week by week. Uh, as you as you know, Immigration New Zealand have their priorities in terms of applications, and onshore applications are probably more important to Immigration New Zealand right now. Once they start working through that backlog and hopefully their immigration amendment bill enables them to do that a bit more efficiently, then they can start working on the offshore applications that are currently lodged with immigration. And obviously there'll be an update on whether there'll be a, a suspension on offshore applications being lodged. So right now, um, yeah, I suppose, Cash is king, and if you can obtain work in your current environment to enable you to get by while you wait for an outcome on what you, you know, your perceived future, then yeah, I'd say take that opportunity to gain employment where you can, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep updating you as we have more news on, on border closures and ability for offshore staff to get come to New Zealand and um, start working the jobs that they intend to have. Yeah. Cool. Would you like to add something, Min? Yeah, well, um, I think um, Warwick has clearly outlined what the what the risks are, etc. So, you know, no. Okay, cool. Thank you. And um, just from the comment here from Rean, shout out. Um, since the employer is doing the LMC or the advertisement, do they still need to have the SMR? Mm. Yeah, um, would you like to work? Yeah, so over the last few months with uh, government branches being closed, we, we have been able to lodge applications uh, without an SMR. As far as I've seen in terms of the updates this week, and Min might be able to give some further perspective on that, that an SMR is required to lodge a visa application for a lower skilled position. So if we are able to obtain an SMR um, currently or within the next weeks, then that's what's required to submit the application. So that's what's expected. So um, Min might be able to give some further perspective on that. Yes, for um, lower skilled positions, meaning level four to five, you must, uh, the employer must do a labor market check or labor market test that includes advertising the position as well as um, listing it with Work and Income New Zealand. So if they cannot, if Work and Income New Zealand cannot refer anyone to be trained or, or a, you know, a suitable candidate for the position, it's only then that they will issue a skills match report. So it is a mandatory requirement. So the employer must do that as part of the labor market check. Thank you. So I hope we answer your question, Rean. And before we end, I just want to announce the winners of our giveaways on our third, on our second episode. So shout out to Gideon Dolera, Alexander Palampangan, Rick Tolentino, Medal de la Cruz, Regen Baclayon. Roderick Julian, Vining Rinos, Mark Remoto, Rafael Balingoy, Joseph Peronimo, and Jonathan Gallan. So expect there's a giveaway for you. And then, yeah. So 
Thank you so much. So before we end, I would just like to ask Warwick and me to give their last um, words before we end. And then, yeah. So would you like to go first, Warwick? Yeah. Yeah. So from me, again, um, it's, it's challenging times in the world at the moment. Although we've got to alert level two, we've got a bit more freedom. We can go and eat KFC and have takeaways again. Um, but in terms of employment, you know, guys, hang on to your jobs. There's a, there's a lot of people out there that are in worse situations and that are struggling and, and trying to find employment where they can. So if you, you've got a good employer and a good environment that you work in, um, don't go rushing to leave that behind, trying to find a better option out there. At the moment, you know, times are tough and they're only going to get tougher. So hang in there. Um, it's tough still and we're going to face a lot of dramas between sort of you know now and September and, and hopefully from then on we start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, New Zealand's handled the situation extremely well compared to a lot of other countries. We have got a fairly safe environment and you know seeing days where we've got zero cases of COVID is really impressive and I think um, yeah credit to the government for the way they've handled this. Uh, I mean, I am aware that there's a lot of businesses out there that are yeah, struggling at the moment. And as I said, it's only going to result in, in unemployment and challenges for um, businesses to keep those staff employed. So if you've got a job, hang on to it, uh, stay safe and yeah, continue to monitor the situation and changes that are occur in your industry and in your environment but uh for the most part if you've got a job be thankful and um yeah god bless how about you mean do you want to add something yes i uh, like well warwick said these are unprecedented times so there's we're facing quite a lot of challenges now and in the immediate future so those who have i mean i would like as many migrants to um, to come to new zealand However, this is, um, you know, we have some issues at the moment that the government is trying to resolve. Uh, those who have applied uh, from offshore, be patient. Um, hopefully we will get there. If you've been um, advised that your visa has, application has been lodged. So just, you know, we just ask you to be patient. Um, yeah, so I hope you found the information tonight helpful. And so if you have any questions, you send that to CC Recruitment or to myself and I can discuss it with Warwick if it affects, um, if, 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 you know, if, if I need to, if you need, if I need to get his, his, his answer. Um, I just wanna thank the team at CC Recruitment for having me here tonight. Um, I just wanna say hello to the good people of Mindanao and Bukidno. I saw quite a lot of them. Um, and also those who are um, in New Zealand, people that I know. So yeah, thank you for tuning in. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Thanks for your time, my pleasure. And um, I hope you guys are, uh, we answer all your questions. And if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call or send us a message. And we will upload this live video on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook as well. And please tune in on our next update on our next episode next week. So it will be seven o'clock this coming Friday and we have a special guest as well. So make sure that you save the date and we are looking forward to see you. So thank you guys, enjoy the level two and practice social distancing. You have your freedom with you, but please make sure guys to take care of yourself. Thank you guys. And once again, this is a virtual coffee house chat brought to you by CC Recruitment. Thank you and bye. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye.